Hey everyone! So on this channel you will find some videos about Stream on SharePoint, especially talking about things that are different from Stream Classic to Stream on SharePoint so that we can kind of get used to it. One of the biggest things that you all have shared with me as a frustration for you is the lack of the ability to trim the video like we had in Stream Classic. Microsoft does have a solution for that now depending on what type of license you have and it's a software called ClipChamp. So it can be used with or without Stream, but we're gonna talk about it today through the lens of how it's going to help you in Stream on SharePoint. So let's jump right in. First thing that I wanna share with you is you want to find your video by going to the document library associated with where you save your videos. Do not go to the Stream on SharePoint application because you're not going to see the same menu options. So now that I've located my video, I'm gonna to go to the three dots for show more actions. And I'm gonna to go to open. And you'll see this option to edit in ClipChamp. And it's automatically going to import the video that you selected so that you can do some basic editing. Now, unlike Stream Classic, you have way more features than just a simple trim. But we will start with that example. Notice that I can drag the handle at the beginning or end of the video. This will automatically remove those parts from the video. It can take a few tries to get exactly the trim that you want. With ClipChamp, you have more options than just trim. You now have the option to cut parts from anywhere in the video, which is new for stream. In this example, I wanna cut a section in the center of the video. Drag the playhead to the part of the timeline where you would like the cut to begin and select the split tool, the scissors icon. Find the spot where you would like the cut to end and use the split tool again. Delete that section of the media and drag the clip over so the two parts line up. There are other basic edits you can make using this tool as well. Let's take a quick look at the left hand navigation menu. You have the option to import additional media files such as another video. You can record additional content right here in ClipChamp or add things like text, stock images, etc. When it comes to the music, video, images, and graphics, there are several in the library, but not all of them are free. If you see a little diamond icon in a yellow box, that means this is a premium asset and will incur an additional fee to use. But there are a few free options to choose from. The last option on the menu bar is transitions. There are several to choose from and they can add a bit of visual interest to your videos. But like PowerPoint, I recommend using them strategically. In this example, I will put a push over the cut we made earlier. There's a key piece of information and the push transition can bring people's attention to this information. Now that I've made the few simple changes I wanted to my stream on SharePoint video, it is time to send it back to stream. Go to the upper right hand corner and click on export. A dialog box will appear in the center of the screen. Here you can rename the project file and choose the quality of the video. Notice that the video will export back to SharePoint, but you can choose another location by clicking on change location. Notice that the video will go back to the same document library and folder that the original video was stored in, but you can use the left navigation menu to see additional save locations. In this example, I do want the file to go back to the forms folder, so I will just click select to go back to the export dialog box. Now I will click on export and an edited version is replacing the original version in SharePoint. You also have a few options here for other ways to share or download the video. Most of the time I would use publish to stream, but you can also save a copy to your computer for a backup as an example. I'm going to jump back to SharePoint and now you see the video file and the project file. If you want to make additional edits, just open the project file and continue editing. This is the basics of using ClipChamp to do some basic editing of stream videos, but there is more to explore with this tool, so I encourage you to give it a try.